No, I wasn't booing. I was saying mooch. I was. <clears throat> the story of Donald and the mooch is the stuff of great dramas. Longtime acquaintances turned friends, brought together by their mutual loves of money, ambition, and attention, driven apart when they both got what they wanted and realized it just wasn't enough. I mean, I would watch that on HBO, right? Right? Of course, it would be a documentary, not a work of fiction, because the drama of President Donald Trump and former White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci is very much a real life happening. And it is, well, it is amazing. Let's start from the start. The two men met in 1995 when Scaramucci was working at Goldman Sachs. Quote, oh, I remember being very impressed, Scaramucci recalled about his first impression of Trump. I read his book, The Art of the Deal. Very impressed." And quote. Sidebar. Scaramucci was rehired at Goldman two months after being fired from Goldman in 1991. His second time around, he landed in the sales department, which is, well, perfect. And sidebar. While Trump was growing into a reality TV star in the 2000s, Scaramucci was making his fortune thanks to something called Skybridge Capital, a hedge fund specifically aimed at doctors and dentists. So Scaramucci reportedly approached Trump to invest in the hedge fund early on, although it's not clear if Trump ever actually did. So the two men ran in similar social circles, and judging by Trump's ever-changing party affiliation during those years, were members of the same party, the green one. Quote, you know what I am? And don't forget this about me, I'm a member of the green party, Scaramucci told a Guardian reporter in 2018, while pulling out a wad of $100 bills wrapped in a silver money clip. He added, quote, see the green? Okay, that's the green. I'm a member of the Green Party, end quote. Right, money is green, I get it. So, Mooch and Trump were friendly. Game recognized game, the kids say. But they were not besties, at least politically speaking. Scaramucci initially endorsed Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker for president in 2016, and then, when Walker imploded after just a few months in the race, the Mooch wound up on Jeb Bush's fundraising team. When Low Energy Jeb dropped out of the race, Scaramucci turned to his old pal Donald J. Trump. Explaining his move to NPR, Scaramucci said this. My point is that uh, I'm a team playing Republican. I'm hoping that whatever soreness he's inflicted upon others, all people will put that aside and they will become team oriented and coalesce around him. Which never really happened, but Trump won anyway. And Scaramucci, who had taken to his role as a Trump fundraiser and TV defender with zeal, he literally doesn't do things any other way, was suddenly one of the best known faces among the incoming president's inner circle. Quote, if he says he's going to build a wall and make the Mexicans pay for it, my guess is he's going to build the wall and the Mexicans are going to pay for it. Scaramucci told New York Magazine of Trump on the day after the 2016 election. And he added, I think, that's going to happen, end quote. And because he is Scaramucci, he expected to be rewarded for what he had done for Trump. The moot said he was promised a gig running the White House Office of Public Liaison, but was blocked from the job by then White House Chief of Staff Rance Priebus and Trump political Svengali Steve Bannon. So Mooch stayed in Trump's orbit though, mostly by doing TV hits where he parried attacks about the many, many, in politic things Trump was saying and tweeting. And Scaramucci was rewarded for that persistence in July 2017, when the president named him as White House Communications Director. And then a lot of things happened, and happened very quickly. Press Secretary Sean Spicer resigned, objecting to the Mooch being his boss. Scaramucci held a press conference with reporters, in which he predicted that, quote, the President of the United States is going to have a phenomenal relationship with the press, end quote. Really nailed that one. And then Scaramucci got on a phone call with a reporter from The New Yorker, who's also a CNN contributor, named Ryan Lizza, no relation, we're just both Italian, where Scaramucci went off on, well, basically everyone. He called Priebus a paranoid schizophrenic. He suggested Bannon was primarily interested in committing a lewd and candidly acrobatic sex act on himself. Within days, the mooch was fired. Literally days. 11 days to be exact. Now, had the story ended there, it would have been enough. But it didn't end there. 
In mid-August 2019, Scaramucci went public with this news. He was not only no longer supporting Trump, but he was actively organizing a movement to replace the president on the 2020 Republican ticket. I think you have to uh, consider a change at the top of the ticket when someone is acting like this. Adding, quote, let's watch how this unfolds, end quote. <laughs> what a swerve. I did not see that coming. Now Trump, because he is Trump, responded on Twitter, and it went a little like this, quote, Anthony Scaramucci is a highly unstable nut job who was with other candidates in the primary who got shellacked and then, unfortunately, wheedled his way into my campaign. I barely knew him until his 11 days of gross incompetence made a fool of himself, bad on TV, end quote. To which Scaramucci, of course, responded by comparing Trump to the Night King and himself to Jon Snow. I see you Game of Thrones heads out there. Okay. Now, this all happened in real life. And if you're surprised, you haven't been paying attention to the most popular reality show in the world. I call it the Trump presidency. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.